Hi, Lightning fans, Kaylee Chelios. Very excited to be joined with Elliot Friedman. Elliot, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pretty strange time right now, but we see you're a really busy, busy man as of late. How's everything going for you before I start firing hockey questions at you? Well, Kaylee, I've been so busy, I haven't had time to shave. So yes, it has been a busy <laughs> time lately. Uh, you know what? I'm excited. I, I had to tell you, I probably like everybody else, I didn't know if this the whole thing was going to work. But I've been encouraged by the testing results in basketball and soccer. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that we're going to get to uh, see some hockey soon. And I hope you're doing great, too. Yeah, thank you. I am. And it seems like everybody, like you said, is kind of adjusting to the new health and safety protocols. And uh, it's going well so far at training camp. But let's kind of get into the nuts and bolts a little bit uh, regarding some of the exhibition games coming up to get guys ready. But then the round robin format. Um, are there, you know, do you get the sense that the Lightning or any of these four round robin teams are overly concerned about the seeding for matchup purposes at all? Uh, when you look at teams kind of seeing who their opponents are going to be moving forward? No, you know, honestly, I, I think, you know, on my work at Sportsnet, they just gave me a thing. They want me to, fi uh, to fill out by Sunday who I think is going to win all the rounds and advance in the playoffs. And I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea. Like, you know, first of all, I can't even remember some of the last games that were even played. Um, you know, there's always questions about, you know, who's healthy, who isn't, who's going to feel the rust, who isn't. I think that the biggest question every team is going to have is, are our goalies ready to go? Like, you can't afford your number one guy or, or your top guys not to play well at the beginning. But, you know, one thing that Brian Burke has said, Kelly, that I really do agree with is that those eight teams, the top four in the East and the West that have – the advantage of not having to play those playoff games right away, that's enormous. He thinks it's a huge advantage, and I agree with him. I think, you know, the Lightning are going to get the one exhibition game and those three-round robin games to just sort of feel their way in and see how guys are. Like, you know, if another team had a player like Stamkos that maybe wasn't healthy and they were right in the playoffs, you'd be panicking right now. Uh, I, I think Tampa's position is excellent, and they have a few extra games Whoever you're playing, you know they're going to be playing well. You know they're going to be good. At least you can get yourself ready and healthy and see who's going and who isn't with less pressure. Well, and they have a healthy group this year and maybe a chip on their shoulder. So much has happened since the end of the regular season. But the Lightning in the last six years, really from the 2014-15 season, they've made it to a Stanley Cup final. They've made it to two Eastern Conference finals. They've come so close. It seems like they have all the tools, personnel, great coach, what do you think, Elliot, just from watching them and watching a team like Washington in the past, just what's it going to take for this group uh, to really make it over the hump and win the Stanley Cup, the one thing they have not done? Well, Kaylee, you, you kind of took, you kind of stole half my answer there because you brought up <laughs> Washington. And, you know, I remember watching the Capitals win that Stanley Cup in, in Vegas, and it, it reminded me of something, and that is you always bet on talent. Um, when you have star elite players – and Washington had elite players um, for a long time, and Tampa has had elite players for a long time. You bet on them that eventually they're going to figure it out. And, you know, how many times did we say, oh, they should trade Ovechkin, or they should trade Backstrom, or they should break up that group? And they never did, and eventually they won. And, you know, Tampa's going to have salary cap concerns. Everybody in this league is going to have salary cap concerns. But the bottom line is they have – how many players on that roster? A lot that other teams would do anything to get their hands on. So I really believe I don't. You know, I know what happened last year. Last year's last year. I think they have a chip on their shoulder, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't continue to bet on the Lightning. When you have Kucherov, when you have Hedman, when you have Stamkos, when you have McDonough, when you have Vasilevsky, when you have the guys coming who are coming and the guys developing who are developing, I'm betting on that team that they're going to figure it out. And you can dwell on last year, or you can say, this is another chance. I'm an optimistic, positive guy. I always go with option B. And unlike last season for them, they have a healthier group now. I mean, everybody does around the NHL in terms of coming into this playoffs. They have a healthy group. But Victor Hedman in particular, when you talk about talent, and especially this Lightning team, you know, what makes him to you? He's now for the fourth year been in the Norris Trophy conversation. He won in 2018. What makes him one of the best defensemen all around in this league and how he can really drive the bus for this Lightning team going into the playoffs? 
You know, Kaylee, I think one of the reasons he keeps getting nominated is because he shows up with the best suit every year. <laughs> he does. <laughs> no, I, it was fun. I'll tell you a funny story. Like, he wore that thing last year, that, that purple tuxedo thing or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I told our guys that the next awards, I want to wear something like that. And <laughs> so they're putting together the next awards, I, I get a suit like that. So I'm very excited about the possibility. I, I just think that, um, you know, like, one of the things I learned over the years, like, Matt Sundin played in Toronto. And one of the things that I, I really learned is that just because a guy doesn't act on the ice like Mark Messier doesn't mean that he doesn't want to win and do well. And, you know, Victor Hedman, you know, he looks smooth and he's a very – I mean, you deal with him a lot. He's a very polite, uh, easygoing guy, but he burns to win. Like, I, I don't think that you can be as good as Victor Hedman is and be – on that uh, podium of Norris Trophy nominees for four straight years without a demand of yourself to be great and do well. And I, I really think that's what does it. He's an, he's an incredibly talented guy, but he's not satisfied with his talent. He works at it. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's a guy who burns to be successful. I think there's a side to him that is that that really desires to win that sometimes he doesn't show us all or – she shields it from us a bit, but I, I think the reason that he's so good and the reason he's a linchpin and a cornerstone is because he demands a lot of himself and he demands a lot of the people around him. Yeah, absolutely. And just from watching some of his practices, I know Vasilevsky gets talked about so much for his compete, but I would say Victor Hedman is one player I would be scared to screw up a drill or go against every practice with how much he his compete level at that. Even in the practice setting, it's pretty – incredible to watch so very uh very insightful though of you to say that too um and looking at some of the other players on this team that julian brisebois he made some additions at the trade deadline is this roster he added gojin goodbro uh, as well as blake coleman up front um to this roster during the trade deadline is this team a better more poised team going into the playoffs um, than before the trade deadline he's done such a great job Julian has at maintaining his core assets and then building kind of these role players and other valuable players around them year after year well there's no question that just because of the unique nature of this year I think you're going to have to have depth. you need depth like you know the guys have had a lot of time off but they're not used to playing games this competitive right when they come back um you know like yeah, like one of the things I'm, I'm kind of looking at is that, you know, Tampa, like they last played obviously in March and we're going into August. Um, you're going to have guys who haven't played a competitive game, like a lot of teams for five and a half months. Like when is the last time the Tampa Bay Lightning have gone five and a half months without playing a game? Like it, 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 it almost never happens. Right. Okay. So, so I, I think it's, I think some of those guys are going to be hungry, but you worry, do guys get hurt? Do guys get banged up a little bit? And you have depth. Like, like when you take the lightning, depending on how many guys Julian brings, let's say he brings 27 skaters. Well, you're going to go down that roster and you're going to say, ooh, like 19 is still really good and 20 is still really good and 21 can play for a lot of other teams and so can 22 and 23. And, and I think that's the thing that I really like about it is if someone gets hurt, you're going to have NHL-ready players to step in. You guys are really deep. You can come at – teams in waves you're gonna to to be able to have a lot of night like in the playoffs your stars have to be great but you also need like a surprise hero almost every night you're gonna have a lot of guys on your roster who could be surprise heroes and you know the other thing too is like you know we talked about a little bit earlier Kaylee you know Tampa's gonna have some decisions to make so I think there comes to be years where you got to say as, as a GM and an organization we're good enough to win we're pushing in our chips we're going all in because either A, we're good enough to win or circumstances dictate that this is the year we have to do it. And I think that has happened a bit with Tampa. So why not go all in? Because it sends a message to your team. So you talked earlier about last year. This sends a message to your team and your players that I don't care about last year. I still think we're good enough. So that's why we're doing this. And I think players respond to that. And two players, you mentioned just kind of being surprise heroes. Two players, not necessarily surprises at all, but players who have had a huge impact on this Lightning roster, especially towards the end of the regular season. Mikhail Sergeyev playing big minutes with some injuries on the back end. And Anthony Sorelli, two players uh, who have definitely taken strides this season. 
What do you think of their impact on the team and maybe how challenging um, it might be to fit them into the cap for the Lightning? Well, first of all, I saw Ryan Callahan's tweet the other day about how annoyed he was that Anthony Sorelli wasn't a finalist for the Selkie Trophy. And uh, I, I'll tell you this, I have no doubt that uh, Sorelli's agents are just as unhappy as Callahan was. Um, you know, I, I think that one of the things that happens with that award is there is some reputation. You know, Couturier, Bergeron, Ryan, and they're great players. I mean, those guys are all – could be going to the Hall of Fame. Um, it's tough to break into that group. But Sorelli, I mean, people noticed. Like, I'm a big believer, Kaylee, that the right people are always watching. And sometimes people think they don't get enough credit or they don't get enough recognition. But I think the right people always notice is who's a difference maker and who's not. And people notice that, you know, Sorelli is, is a difference maker. Uh, you know, you look at how much time he played that year. The ultimate reward is ice time. And this year, John Cooper gave, you know, him ice time. I think he's a huge factor uh, on your team. And I agree, so, so is Sergachev. I mean, you can ease him in a little bit at times because you were deep on the blue line. He's a much improved player this year, and I think he's only going to get better. Uh, one of the coaches I know is going to San Jose, Rocky Thompson, is a huge Sergachev fan. He's been telling me for years it was only a matter of time before he can take off. As for the cap, Kaylee, I, I look at it this way. The players will sort it out. Um, players play determines what you're going to do. And at the end of the year, Julian Breesbaugh will make his decisions based on what players determine they, they are going to be part of the future of this team. And you're going to have to make uh, difficult choices because that's just the nature of the cap and you won't be the only ones. But this year in the playoffs, the players play will determine the choices that Julian makes. And there's so many unknowns going into this for players, coaches, for us, everybody just going into the bubble, kind of wondering what playoffs are going to be like from your perspective. I know nobody really knows, but what do you think about the player's intensity level and will it be able to match what we're used to seeing in playoff hockey with an arena that has zero fans in it this season? Um, I think it's going to be weird at the beginning. <laughs> no question about that. You know, the, the NHL is doing a media conference on Thursday where they're going to kind of announce how it looks. I saw some pictures on uh, Twitter today of how the NBA court is going to look. And, you know, there's a lot of screens there. So what that says to me is like, you know, in the NHL, they asked, for example, Lightning fans to submit photos of themselves or videos of themselves cheering for teams. So I think that is going to be incorporated. Some screams up. So if the Lightning scores, um, you know, Stamkos one-timer on the power play or something like that, you get Lightning fans on the screens cheering. I know they've talked about goal songs. I don't know what specific goal songs Lightnings have, but bringing that there. It's going to be weird at the beginning, I think, Kaylee, no question. But I think as, as you get closer to the Stanley Cup, and if you're a team that really thinks it can win the Cup as Tampa does – I think you're going to concentrate on just winning the games. And, you know, I did wonder at the beginning, were these going to be like no hitter games, like lack of intensity? The, the closer we get to it and the more guys are getting into it, I think some of these games are going to be pretty intense. For sure. And more than anything, obviously, the player safety is the most important thing right now. So it seems like at training camp, from what I've heard and, how things are going, that players, coaches, staff are feeling pretty comfortable uh, with the health and safety protocols in place. Have you heard um, of any concerns after the protocols have been in place from players or teams or organizations moving forward as they get ready to go into the bubble? You know, Kelly, I really do believe, like, you know, for example, when Tampa had to shut down and St. Louis had to shut down, I think there were a lot of people who were worried. Um, you know, I, I think that when um, – you know, I, I think that when, for example, uh, that situation in Montreal where they had like a false positive, I think some guys were a little bit concerned, okay, how safe is the testing? You know, we had that. But now I think one of the things that people are kind of worried about, Kaylee, is just before we get into the bubble, do people make good choices? Like, do they stay out of public? They, they keep social distancing. Do they wear masks where necessary? Uh, do they keep their group small? They stay out of places, especially inside where you can, it's more easily transmittable. You know, Boston, Cam Neely admitted today that he wished some better choices had been made. And last weekend, nine Bruins weren't skating. But the one thing I think that's really helped is that in the NBA, they had back-to-back -back days with no positive tests in the bubble. 
soccer, which looked like it was going to be a real problem at a day with no positive tests. I think people have looked at those results and said, look, if we can get in the bubble, we're going to be okay, as long as people make good choices. And I think that's the key until the weekend when everybody moves in, just please make good choices. And just lastly, Elliot, does the Stanley Cup make it into the bubble, or have you heard anything about the way the Stanley Cup is going to be able to be celebrated compared to how we're so used to seeing it with the sharing and the drinking out of it and all that good stuff? Well, I did actually, I saw your question there when you sent it to me, so I made a quick call. I said, I better be prepared to answer <laughs> this one. And, and somebody brought up to a, a really good point to me, and they said that if this all works, that bubble is going to be the safest place to be. And so why can't you bring the Stanley Cup in there? In theory, like, you know, that's what he said to me. In theory, why can't you bring it in there? Now, the other thing they're talking about, Kaylee, is for the fa semifinals and finals, bringing the families to Edmonton there too. So then all of a sudden you could get a situation where at least the families are in the crowd to watch the games. And then you could have a situation where you can celebrate with your teammates and their families. So maybe we don't get the tour and uh, maybe like St. Louis had that players only or staff only flight home last year, which they all said was a huge highlight. I don't know if you get that as much, but if this goes according to plan, I think they will do everything they can to have the families and a party in the rink with the team that wins the cup. I'll tell you this, Kaylee, too. I will never feel worse for the team that loses the Stanley Cup <laughs> than the one that loses this year. Oh, that's a great point, Elliot. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. As always, excellent insight. Uh, we look forward to seeing your coverage uh, as training camp moves on and as you head on to the bubble, I'm sure. All right. Thanks very much, Kaylee. I really appreciate you asking me. Happy to do it. Yeah. Thanks, Elliot. Take care. You too.